On this last Sunday of the church year, we worship Christ our King. And we ask the question, what is our legacy in the world? What will people say about us and about our faith and about our life? Join us as together we worship Jesus Christ the King and as we grow in faith. Hello and welcome to our service of word and prayer for the last Sunday of the church year, Christ the King Sunday. A couple of announcements as we start our worship together, even though we are apart. Do want to invite you to our in-home Thanksgiving service. It's our only Thanksgiving service this year. It's going to be available by Tuesday at 5 p.m. on our website, vlc-ny.org. Go to download and then media or on our Facebook or YouTube channel. Either way, it's a wonderful way for you and your loved ones to join together in thanking God for all of God's gifts to us for our Thanksgiving holiday. Well, you know what happens soon after Thanksgiving, we begin to think about Christmas and we have an Advent Bible study opportunity coming up. It's gonna be on Monday, November 30th from 7.30 until 8.30 p.m. It's a Zoom Bible study. If you'd like more information, just contact the church office and we'd love to have you be a part of that study as we look forward to the season of Advent and think about how we prepare for the birth of Christ. Every person or family that participates receives a magnetic Advent wreath to help you in your observance of Advent as we get ready for Christmas. We also continue our Tuesday conference call as we pray for the needs of the world. As a reminder, it's at 6 p.m. each Tuesday during this time of pandemic. If you'd like to make a gift to Village Lutheran Church in the Chapel School, you can do so even at our in-home service. You can go to our website, vlc-ny.org, click on Participate and Giving. You can also text to give by texting 914-368-6636. You can also just send in a gift. Either way, thank you. We are so grateful for your support at Village Lutheran Church and the Chapel School. We begin our time together as we center our hearts and focus our minds and thoughts on Christ our Savior with the music of the prelude. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, 
and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. To gather as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The intro it is from Psalm 95. We read it responsively. The Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our opening hymn for Christ the King Sunday is Crown Him with Many Crowns. with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, it is your will to restore all things to your beloved Son, whom you anointed priest forever and King of all creation. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united under the glorious and gentle rule of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, 
according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at the right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at the right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And then the king will answer, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our hymn of the day is Take My Life and Let It Be.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus. An epitaph on a tombstone is often the last word to the world. Sometimes it can even be a funny last word. For instance, someone put on their tombstone, I told you I was sick. On another tombstone, this was the inscription. She always said her feet were killing her, but nobody believed her. Rodney Dangerfield, that classic comedian, had this put on his tombstone. There goes the neighborhood. And there's a particularly poignant headstone where just the date of birth and the date of death are listed with these words. I have nothing further to say. Tombstones are not the only way that we give a lasting legacy. We can give a lasting legacy with the life that we have lived. The Apostle Paul, in our epistle reading for today, talks about the lasting legacy of the church at Ephesus, a church in modern-day Turkey. This Ephesians, this letter to the church at Ephesus, is what we call a prison letter, which means it was written probably about 62 AD by the Apostle Paul as he was under house arrest waiting for a trial at Rome. We can tell a prison epistle because Paul often talks about being in chains for the gospel, a prisoner in other words. He also had a lot more time on his hands because he was quarantined, so to speak, so his language was much more flowery and beautiful than some of the other epistles that he wrote. Beautiful Greek that even translates into beautiful English. For instance, in the reading for today, he talks about hearts that are enlightened. He talks about the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints. And he talks about the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe big, beautiful words that Paul uses in this prison epistle. The Apostle Paul comments, though, specifically on the legacy that he has heard about the Christians at Ephesus. And I'd like to focus on that for today. This is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Listen to what Paul says about them. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. What does he say about the church at Ephesus? He says when he hears about them, what he hears is that they have a strong faith in Jesus, the one who was crucified and rose again, and that they have a love, a deep love for all the saints. Now understand that when the, this was written, the word saints didn't mean an official saint of the church. It meant anyone who was baptized into Christ. In other words, a fellow believer. So what Paul says he has heard about the church at Ephesus is that they have a deep, abiding faith in Jesus and that they love each other. They really support and care for the fellow Christians around them. That's their legacy. I think it invites us to ask the question of our lives, what is our legacy? What have people heard about us? And I think it's a particularly good question to ask during a time of crisis, during this time of transition, during this time of pandemic, COVID-19. What do we want to be remembered for from this time? Do we want to be remembered as people who took up day drinking? Of course not. Do we want to be known as someone who became bitter or selfish, who cared more about their own freedom than the health of others? Do we want to be known as people who were preoccupied with division and anger? Do we want to be known as people who wasted a year and a half held captive by fear? Of course not. That's not the legacy that any of us want during this time of pandemic. It's not what we would want others to hear about us. We've even been thinking about this in relation to our church. 
During the winter, our staff and ministry leaders are gonna be asked to strategically plan for the time after the pandemic. Now, why would we do this? We do this because certainly there are bad things that have happened during the pandemic. It's difficult for individuals and families and even organizations like churches. It has been stressful and a struggle. However, there have also been great blessings during this pandemic, and we need to strategically plan to restart our ministries when the pandemic is over because we want to make sure that we take these opportunities that God has given us and include them in our new reality. For instance, we have become so much better at video ministry, like I'm doing right now. And it has been a great blessing to us to connect to our members during this time of pandemic, but also to connect with old friends that had no way of worshiping together with us and even making new friends who visited our church for the first time via video. We have grown in this area, although we're certainly not perfect. And as we plan for the future, there will come a day that we don't absolutely have to do this. But we want to take advantage of what we have learned and make sure that we keep reaching out in this modern way. We also have increased in our virtual study of God's Word. During this time of pandemic, we have offered op opportunities and people have taken up those opportunities to grow in their faith, to take this time of pandemic to get stronger in their relationship with Jesus and the church. When this pandemic is over, we want to continue that trend as all of us grow stronger in our faith in Jesus. And just one more example, during this time of pandemic, we have had a passion for helping to feed those who are hungry, our food insecure. Now, hopefully there will come a day when no one is hungry, but until that day comes, we want to retain that passion for reaching out. And so that's why we plan strategically so that we remember these wonderful opportunities that God gave us and incorporate it into what we do after the pandemic, into the new normal, so to speak. Well, that's our church, but what about me as an individual? What about you? What do people say about us? What is our legacy? Well, we can have a no better legacy. We can have no better legacy than what the Ephesians had, a deep faith in Jesus who died and rose again for us, and a deep and abiding love and support for all the saints, for our fellow believers. But what else? What other areas would you like to grow in during this time of pandemic? What new opportunity would you like to take up what old bad habit would you like to break? Or what new habit would you like to start? What relationship that is broken would you like to heal? Or what skill would you like to learn to, earn, to add to your toolkit of skills to help you in your life and your occupation and in your relationships? So it all begins with a lump of carbon carbon exposed to extreme compression and pressure over a lot of time. And eventually what was just carbon is crystallized into what we call a diamond. And when you look at a diamond on the finger of a newly engaged one, you don't think about the carbon, do you? You don't think about the time and you don't think about the stress that that carbon went through. You only look at the legacy of that beautiful diamond that graces her finger, the beautiful legacy that is right in front of you. Now is a time for us to think about our legacy. Paul wrote, I have heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. What will they say they heard about us? What will they say they heard about me? What will they say they heard about you? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
On this Christ the King Sunday, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Waiting for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Sovereign God, train our ears to hear your voice in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages, especially where they exist in our own nation and among friends and family. Lead us to seek an end to division and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Pour out the gifts of your Spirit on our children and youth. Sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. We pray especially for Concordia College and the chapel school. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Loving shepherd, you feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and tend to the sick. We give thanks for all caregivers and those whose generous spirits serve as your helping hands. Use us to help each other during these difficult days and send aid and comfort to all who are in distress. We pray especially for all on our prayer lines and those we remember before you now. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. King of glory, we thank you for the inspiration of those who served you by serving others and have now received their inheritance. Comfort those who mourn with the sure promise of the heavenly kingdom prepared for all who love you. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and keep us in your faith and favor until that day when you gather all creation around your throne. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.